Thank you very much, guys, as we are joined here by Perks after G2 went 2-0 this week. Congratulations. Thank you. Very, very impressive. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about that game yesterday first versus Vitality. That was also very interesting. About this one, though, what did you make of the two drafts? Because something we had our eye on coming into this is Giants is drafting because against Fnatic, it wasn't ideal. What did you make of the, the two drafts? Uh, well, I think actually leaving in the open ever is not a good idea. <laughs> If you want to win, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but they did get like a good trade-off, like Brown Kalista, which is like two strongest uh, champs on the, the on the rolls. So I guess that was fine. And they had some tank and like Azir to. Actually, I don't think Azir was a good pick because Azir is good against tanks, like which can shed tanks and cannot go and they cannot come to him. But versus uh, Squishy Poke, like we had Ezreal in Italy, it's a really bad pick and especially Lulu speed up and. He couldn't do anything, so... What else could he have picked? Uh, I don't know. No? Nothing, <laughs> apparently. Oh, you don't I don't know. know. <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Pepe having no counter pick right there. <laughs> you are Lulu. Uh, we've seen it a few times. I see you like to copy Faker with the build as well. Tell me about it. Frost Queens into Lich Pain. Uh, I think the build is really good because you get... Uh, you buy Frost Fang on first base, which is like 100% mana regen. It's super OP. Like It's like Morello, you know, with 800 gold. And then uh, you get frost, fr frost queen, which can like you can like s uh, slow people or like just find out where they are, so you don't have to face check. And just leech Band second is for like movement speed and more damage output. And then you go into like Rabadons, Ludens, whatever you like for damage. And yeah, it, it, it you, you cannot see it, but I did the most damage in the game. <laughs> Lulu sure. Was the we'll okay. check that. Febman <laughs> also said actually at IEM that he thought Lulu was super overpowered and that more people should uh, pick it. One more thing about the game, as we were tracking how smart G2 plays the game, that has been a storyline, and you specifically wanted to look at the dragon and lane swap situation you didn't agree with. Yeah, so I personally hate dragons and lane swap because I think it slows down the tempo of the swap too much. Perks, your team, I mean, obviously right here you're stuck in mid lane doing absolutely nothing, which was basically the story of the game for you. But why are you guys going Dragon here in the swap? Mm, I have no clue. You have to ask my team about that one. <laughs> <laughs> so this is just a team code you're not part of. I don't think that's actually that good um, because we just lose on tempo. Like they get they get to tier 2 faster and then they get actually tier 3. But which was still actually okay, I think. But yeah, it shouldn't have happened. But so in this situation now where Giants are obviously pushing down, get this tower. It's too late for you guys to recall because you're trying to mirror what they're doing. When you lose that inhib tower, how impactful is that? Because technically, it gives you guys like a, a complete dead lane where the enemy team can barely farm because the lane is so long and there's no tower to bounce it back. Do you actually feel like taking that trade potentially for Dragon for Inhib Tower is okay? Uh, well, I think it's okay, yeah, because like even if this game wasn't like so stomp, uh, we would get like more dragons. Like second dragon is actually pretty good right now. Like there's so much damage in turrets, you get to push way faster, and third dragon is always good for like a lot of movement speed. So I think getting the dragon was an okay trade, but maybe we shouldn't have done it. Right. We're gonna discuss the money. I mean, a lot of this also goes like 30 seconds earlier. Ezreal were like slow pushing out the bot lane to then go dragon, so they actually fell super far behind the tempo also before the dragon started. Yeah, but you won the game and you're two and zero this week, so I gotta ask you about <laughs> your form right now. Of course, yesterday a very smart game versus Vitality, and Kick has said that you guys are actively working on that. How much did scrimming international teams from IEM help? I saw you guys tweeting a lot. Don't want to put words in your mouth. Uh, well, scrimming international teams, we didn't. We actually get, only got to scrim one team, and I wouldn't want to talk about it. I don't <laughs> think it helped us at all. They are even more clueless than we are in the in macro place, so... Let me guess, LPL team. I think you're right. Right. Okay. <laughs> uh, I mean, it must have given something, right? Maybe some new picks uh, or anything? I think we got some picks, maybe some strategies as well. And like seeing them play, it's like reflecting on us like before, only aggro, you know? But now we were actually working on it for like past two, three weeks to play more around the objectives, like mostly turrets, and it's working out, so... So how do you guys practice it? Like, is it Youngbok after every scrim saying like, guys, okay, next game, you know, we have to get five dragons or we got to remember to call this and this and this and then play around towers this way or like what specifically are you guys changing? Is it just in-game in the shot calling? Uh, I think like our coach reminds us that we should play for objectives after every game and it's getting better with each game because before it was like really a massacre every game, you know? <laughs> but now it's uh, actually getting some strategy in there as well. So I think we're going to be a strong team. Who's going to win the playoffs, Perks? I don't know. Maybe G2. That's a little more uh, calm than two weeks ago or three <laughs> weeks ago when we asked you, but we'll see what happens. Thank you very much.
All right, coming up next, Elements will keep fighting to secure their spot in the summer split against the fourth place Unicorns of Love. As we go, Steve looks back at his team's last clash with the Pink Ponies. I think we would have an easier time against them, even though we had a really bad game against the, them, but it's just like it was we got outdrafted and just uh, we didn't play the lane swap good at all, so we lost. We got way better in lane swap, but we still lack stuff in the mid game, so we have to work on that. But we won't lose game just from lane swap anymore. 